and welcome back to The Burn Podcast, hosted by Ben Newman. This week on the podcast, we are going to dive into a topic very important to Ben, and that is his calendar and daily routine. Now more than ever, Ben's been getting a lot of questions about his daily routine and how he structures it. So we decided to pull a small clip from his newest uncommon coaching video and share it with you in the form of this week's podcast. So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode. So my uncommon calendar, I wake up at 2.24 every single day. The reason why I do that is because my kids wake up around 6 or 6.30. So when I hear the pitter-patter of my kids' feet, my routine better be finished. Now that's a choice. That's a sacrifice I make. But I wake up at that time knowing it's going to take me a good two and a half hours, three and a half hours in order to complete my routine. Here's what I do. First thing, I give a little of myself, sending text messages, doing social media, connecting to my burn. I give of myself. Why? Because John Wooden said it. A great day cannot be had until you do something for somebody else with no expectation of anything in return. So sending out positive messages to start the day after I've connected to my burn, what drives me, that helps me attack. Now let me take one step back. My alarm, my alarm. Some of you heard me talk about this on Ed Milet's podcast. My alarm actually has a name on it. You can name your alarm. So my alarm says Jan Fishman Newman Legacy. So the first thing I see when that alarm goes off at 2.24 in the morning is my mother's name. I also keep my phone in another room. So if I keep my phone in another room to make sure that my wife doesn't kill me if that alarm is going off and I wake her up, I'm gonna have a little light jog in order to get to that phone. Then I see my mother's name. The probability of me hitting the snooze is zero at that point. I am up, I am engaged, I am locked in on that burn. Then, that's when I send my social media messages. Got to come downstairs, get settled in in my environment, down in our basement. I've got a chair where I do all of my reading, my morning routine, everything I'm about to share with you. So I get into my chair. It's my thought of the day. That's what I share. There's nobody predetermining or writing text messages for me. It's me. You're getting me, my thoughts. Social media, that's me in the morning, my thoughts. What am I thinking about? Me giving of myself to the world. After that, the routine begins putting my head in a daily devotional. Very important for me. Very important for me. Tony Dungy's Uncommon Daily Devotional. I'm actually on that my second time through right now. It's an incredible devotional. I also journal my mother's name, Janet Fishman Newman Legacy, and then I write Uncommon Amongst the Uncommon. I call that the Burn Journal. Then I go through and I actually look at what I'm responsible for in the day, my prize fighter day. Then I do my 10 minutes of reading, I'm sorry, 10 pages of reading every day. And even though I'm not always in a phase of 75 hard, I've now adopted, I at least do 10 pages of reading every single day. Makes a difference in my mindset, how I show up, my ability to learn, to share new content with all of you, to stay fresh and sharp. Then I go back to that to-do list and I start knocking things off. Typically by six o'clock in the morning, 90% of what I need to get done for the day is done. Can you imagine going into your day and all of the busyness, all the tasks, all the emails, all the text messages, everything you needed to do, 90% of it was done? So that all you needed to do was be locked in and focused if I have a virtual speaking engagement, a coaching session, whatever it might be, I'm locked in, I've done the work, I'm not distracted. Clarity of your focus is so powerful. How many of you are currently distracted right now? You're distracted when you get into your day because of all the little things that you have to do. Now, little things come at me during the day, but it's better than adding them to a list that's already long. The list is short because once it comes to me, I've already done everything else. 
Now, let's go back to this morning routine. It also includes my workout. It includes eating a nutritious breakfast. You have to be intentional about what you put into your body. Then I'm gonna wake up the kids, get the kids ready for bed, make them a good breakfast, spend time with the kids, drive them to school. I enjoy that time. It gets me centered and focused. And then my first meeting of the day is at 8.15. It's with Anna from our team. And that's a 15 minute meeting typically to set the tone for the day. Anna, what can I share with you? What do you need from me? Anna is the core. She's the right hand for me. We've been together for seven years. So even though we have Monique from BNC Speakers, we've got Sean from our Uncommon Coaching Program, Jeremy who runs our coaching platform, Tyler who does an amazing, incredible job, couldn't do what we do without him on the creative side, our creative director. It's a huge team, but it starts. My point person is Anna every morning. Once I have that meeting with Anna, I'm ready to attack. Phone calls typically start at 8.30 or virtual speaking engagements, things of that nature, and we attack. I typically only schedule things in 30 minute blocks, sometimes an hour, depending upon what the engagement is. And then I have 30 minute breaks in between. I'll typically end up having seven to eight appointments in a day for a total of 40, 35 to 40 in a week. The reason why I have the 30 minute increments where I have free time, but it's never free time, it's because I'm on call with our coaching clients. If we're one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm on call. So there's an issue and you call me, I'm going to call you back that day. There's text messages that come through. There's emails that come through. I build in that additional time to eat. Waking up at 224, it's no secret. I've shared it many times. I nap. I'll nap for 15 to 20 minutes. It's a nap that provides energy for me to attack the rest of my day. But my calendar is very intentional. It's built specific to how I operate at my highest possible level. So let me ask you a question again. Do you just allow your calendar to do what it's gonna do? Are you intentional with designing it for you to be and to have optimal performance? Build your calendar, honor your calendar, have an environment that causes you to feel great and to want to attack. This is my environment, this is my office. Every single one of these shelves tells a story about a player, individuals in business that we've worked with. Every shelf tells a story. The books that have impacted my life, every shelf. The pictures make me emotional. Family right behind me. It's intentional. How intentional are you with your environment? How intentional are you with your time? How intentional are you with your calendar? How intentional are you with your decisions and your choices? Build your uncommon calendar. Slow down before this fourth quarter starts and attack the hell out of the opportunity to be intentional and focused and locked in with an environment that is going to cause you to be great. To be uncommon amongst the uncommon, oftentimes we have to slow down and be intentional, but then honor. That's the, that's the tough part. Being accountable to yourself and honoring your time, honoring your calendar, honoring your commitments, silencing the self-talk, not making excuses, and doing what you say you're going to do. That's the fastest way to become uncommon. Day after day after day, stacking day after day after day. My day does have a bookend. It ends in terms of things that are business related. 5.30 at the very latest, typically 4.30 or 5. Because of the amount of travel that I do, it gives me the opportunity to be home and focused with the kids, to take them to basketball. They both compete in basketball competitively. Lots of training, busy calendar. I wanna take them, I wanna watch them. I love making dinner for the family. It's a release for me. It's a way for me to slow down. And typically on average, unless one of our athletes has a game and I'm staying up to watch the game, on average I'm asleep by 9.30. I was blessed to not require a lot of sleep, if I get a good four, five, six hours, I'm ready to roll. I'm not suggesting that to anybody. You know you, you know your body. Build your calendar, become uncommon, honor and do what you say you're gonna do, and the most important piece, don't forget to connect to your birth.